I'll make sure to let people here know how much help you've been. They'll be grateful if they can get a drink without dissolving their intestines. <laughs> Grim Dawn makes me appreciate the older games a lot more despite being released more than a decade ago. Its main principle, deliver a game that works on both old and modern machines, does not have microtransactions or predator monetization, does not try to deliver any woke message, but instead provides a solid action RPG experience that is comparable with the most notable games in the genre. My experience with ARPGs is mostly limited to the modern games, like Diablo 3, Path of Exile, and Volson, two of the later we discussed in the past. Grim Dawn was rarely hyped among the gaming communities and content makers, instead it was more supported by the Steam sales. So, being a noob and pleb in the genre, I've just bought Grim Dawn and the final cut of the Van Helsing Adventure, without expecting much from both the titles. By the way, let me know if you want to see the Van Helsing review sometime in the future. Having spent just slightly longer than a dozen hours in the main campaign of Grim Dawn, I gotta say that great entertainment have provided a really captivating and immersive experience, while being extremely comfortable and accessible to play. No doubt that during the recent years it has accumulated a niche but strongly dedicated community and keeps on providing more expansions to the game, making it a really solid choice for every fan of ARPGs left frustrated with Diablo 4 and overburned with Path of Exile grind. The game opens to a cutscene where we are possessed by an ethereal an evil spirit, captured and prepared for Hanin. During the execution, the spirit leaves our body and we are quickly being saved from choking to death by cutting the rope. But the salvation does not come for free, as the savior is the leader of one of the last surviving human camps around. Realizing that we don't remember anything due to the possession, he tells us that we are in the war-torn world of Cairn, a land plagued by the cataclysmic event known as the Grim Dawn. This event has unleashed hordes of other worldly creatures, leading to the collapse of the whole civilization. So, he tells us to kill one of the surrounding monster leaders, which we do, using only hopes and prayers along with the looted remains of weapons. Eventually, we realize that we can touch the ethereal portals, used for their transportation and convert them accessible for humans. In short, our main mission is to convert as much portals for human use and connect the disconnected human camps and towns under the common unified logistics system. Now we see where Kojima has stolen the Death Stranding idea from. And I like this idea of the protagonist being not the ultimate savior of the world and highly trained demon hunter. He is just a result of occasional possession and now he can use ethereal powers that make him powerful enough to slay hordes of monsters. And that allows us to navigate this post-apocalyptic landscape, facing various challenges and horrors along the way. I cannot appreciate enough the Grim Dawn's approach to the character building. It starts simple, with the just three main stats – physique, cunning and spirit. In short, it's strength, dexterity and intelligence. The base game has six classes that are either focused on these stats or provide the combination of some. For example, for me soldier is purely associated with physique, arcanist with spirit, while demolitionist is a physique plus cunning combo and shaman is spirit plus physique. But even after that, with a simple layout of main skills, you can either specialize in something niche or develop something broader. After level 10, you can even combine the skills of two classes and make your build even deeper. So the replayability potential of Grim Dawn is pretty self-explanatory. Personally, I've decided to play pure mage class, focusing on maximizing the spirit stat and eventually adding some points to physique to keep my health a bit higher than the lowest possible. Similar to my playthrough of Path of Exile, I've just watched what type of damage I do with the main skills, and I maximized just that. Luckily, the character statistics screen is always present and always shows how much damage I'm doing with every new weapon and armor set. Eventually, I've beaten the campaign being the Ice Mage, combining the main skills with various perks coming from the Devotion Tree. Yes, Devotion is the system of perks that adds more power to your build. It is linked with the shrines located on different levels of the game. With each shrine cleared out of corruption or restored using special items, we get a 
Ocean Point that we spent on unlocking perks represented by stars linked in constellations. They are freeform and relatively easy to navigate. You need to know what you want to upgrade, though. In my example, I have looked for elemental damage or any form of cold damage. Certain stars also come with additional skills that are to be linked with your main skills so they could be triggered during battle. I have received the huge AoE poison attack during one skill and a hurricane at the other, which were especially helpful during the most dangerous combat encounters. In total, the character building is one of the best that I've seen in the genre. You can do simple stuff and complete the game with little to no stress, or you can dig deep into min-maxing your stats, which seems to be especially important on the higher difficulty levels of the game. Respect is easy using the NPC, and the guides for all this information are provided on the official website, so that you could find information you might need. The gameplay loop is more than familiar for everyone who has ever touched something close to Diablo, be it Sacred or Titan Quest. It feels really familiar. Maybe it's because the game is developed using the Titan Quest engine, but we'll get to that a bit later. The gameplay is exploration, combat, loot and character building. The story is also more than decent for everyone who is eager to know more about the world and the characters. But I'd argue that it's more of an excuse to go to another level to slay another pack of monsters. In short, at the start of the game we are required to just survive in our beginning camp, provide safer space around us, get clear water and the first batch of resources to work with. Eventually, when we discover we need more food, we are being sent to the neighboring camps and towns that has got their own problems with monsters. We do them. Eventually, our talents in monster slain reach the highest leaders of Cairn, and we are tasked with winning the battle against the Ethereals and destroy the local monster leader. Pretty standard stuff. I would argue that the notes scattered around the levels containing the lore are even more illustrative and immersive than the quests and NPC voice lines. We also receive a lot of experience for reading the notes, which makes collecting them even more worthwhile. In regards to graphics, my first reaction was why so much blur? But then I discovered that it's developed on Titan Quest engine. So, I gotta admit that the devs have really pushed the Titan Quest engine to make the game look sometimes even better than Diablo 3. So, on the one hand, we get a passionate indie team that has pushed all the juices out of the old engine, and on another, we have Blizzard. But I digress. Grim Dawn offers a distinctive and visually striking art style that creates its immersive atmosphere. The game's graphics combine elements of dark and gothic fantasy with a touch of steampunk, creating a unique and gritty aesthetic. This artistic blend effectively conveys the grim and desolate worlds of Cain, where darkness and decay dominate the landscape. The environmental design in Grim Dawn is meticulously crafted, featuring detailed and diverse landscapes, from ruined cities to haunted forests. Dilapidated buildings, overgrown ruins and eerie underground dungeons deliver the feeling of a world in ruins. The use of atmospheric lighting and weather effects further enhances the game's overall ambience, making it feel like a desolate and dangerous place. And I'm also pleasantly surprised by the daytime change that feels natural and non-intrusive while also not breaking the overall immersion. Though I would appreciate a little more variety in the beginning stages of the game that mostly features forests, swamps and ruins. The most repetitive levels are the dungeons and caves, but that's objectively understandable. The variety becomes a lot better to the second half of the game featuring farm fields, cursed blood forests, broken castles and even this. By the way, this blackness of the level was even jaw-dropping for me sometimes. The designers have ultimately captured the level of demonic darkness that could exist in the world of ethereals. I'd appreciate more levels with this art style though, but once again, for a small team of indie developers, the overall level design and art style is massively admirable. Character and creature design is equally impressive. Player characters and NPCs are detailed intricately, giving the sense of Victorian style of fashion and weapon designs. And even with the protagonist looking like a hobo without a shotgun, he can look a lot better in different 
different clothing that just works design-wise. The enemies you encounter in Grim Dawn range from bandits and wild animals to grotesque abominations and nightmarish monstrosities, all rendered with a high level of detail. This variety in enemy design adds depth to the game's bestiary and keeps encounters visually engaging. Certainly, the enemy models are recycled, but at least they are color-coded and not simply copy-pasted with higher stats just to be damaged sponges. One aspect that stands out in Grim Dawn's graphics is the animations for skills and spells. Each character class has a wide array of abilities, and these skills are brought to life through fluid and impactful animations. Regardless of the skills, both mine and enemies, the animations add a dynamic and visceral quality to combat. They not only look flashy and eye-catching, but also provide essential visual cues during battles, helping players strategize and respond effectively to the game's challenges. Spell effects in Grim Dawn are particularly noteworthy. Spells and abilities come with dazzling and immersive visual effects that fill the screen with explosions of magic, fire and other elemental forces. These effects not only make combat exciting, but also contribute to the sense of power and mastery as players progress and unlock more potent skills. For example, my cult AoE attack kept on growing in size and scale with each new level, which is a really nice touch. As for the interface, it is a mixed bag of impressions, and I'll start with the biggest frustration that made the early game experience a lot tougher – the fonts and size of the items in the inventory. This especially concerns the crafting items, rings and amulets. It is so small that I can't even point the cursor without missing. At the same time, this allows for compact and neat layout of all the information needed for the play. You just have to either get used to it, or you can always scale the interface according to your preference. But the inventory is never overcluttered. You get used to all the items pretty quickly if you spend a bit time discovering what's doing what, and then you start distinguishing between the crafting items, the consumables and the jewelry. And I cannot thank the devs enough for the loot filter that you can simply customize according to the rarity of items and the required stats. Just thank you, Grim Dawn. Turns out it's not that difficult to make an internal load filter. One extra point regarding the accessibility, the support of controllers. And it's not janky, not lagging, it just works. Left stick to control the character, right to rotate the camera. A couple of skills, a couple of flasks, a map button, a game menu that becomes comfy after getting used to for a bit. Another thank you crate. So, overall Grim Dawn is a really, and I mean a really fun ARPG. Combat is responsive, flashy and addictive. Both battles require strategizing and a lot of movement to succeed. The pace is not the fastest, but it is balanced enough for you to react and come up with a strategy really quickly. It looks a bit dated, yes, and I would appreciate if Crate could provide some upscale for the modern machines to get a bit sharper textures at least. But I guess they've just the Titan Quest engine enough, so it will only be possible with Grim Dawn they're currently working on. The loot grinding is great, and even after the main campaign completion, you get a new game plus or elite difficulty, where you grind through the game again, but keep your level and items to progress further. That's why you may hear experienced players say that you need to complete elite and nightmare difficulty to fully complete the game game and maximize your level. My guess that expansions give even more content, but even the base game is well worth your time and money, which is a lot less than Diablo 4, and Great would be a lot more grateful for it. And that's it for today. If you like this video, please click a like, and if you're here for the first time, consider subscribing to the channel. Share your thoughts and impressions about Grim Dawn down in the comments below, and let me know what game should I review in the first time playing series. As for now, I thank you all for watching. My name is Alex B and I'll see you in the next one.